So there's a problem with this idea of the ether, and that is that experiments designed to test the presence of ether failed to do so. The most famous of these experiments, the most important, is Michelson and Morley, uh, the Michelson and Morley experiment done in 1887, a little more than 20 years after Maxwell published his paper predicting the speed of light. So here's the idea behind this experiment. Let's say that the ether happens to be affixed to uh, the sun, is at rest with respect to the sun. So this orange, this is uh, the sun. So here, um, imagine we have the Earth orbiting around the sun. So up here, the um, Earth is moving in one direction. Down here, it's moving in the opposite direction. So at those two locations, the Earth is moving in different directions with respect to the ether. So we would then expect that the um, observers on Earth would measure different speeds for the speed of light. After all, the speed of light is the speed of light relative to the ether, and we would observe different speeds of, for light if we're moving with respect to the ether. So Michelson and Morley did just that. They did careful, they, they carried out careful measurements of the speed of light at different points in the Earth's orbit, and they found the same value for light every time. So Michelson and Morley failed to detect evidence of the ether. So here's where things stand towards the end of the 1800s. We have these three statements. One is the principle of relativity, that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. Then we have Maxwell's equations. That's a law of physics. And in particular, it says that the speed of light is c. There's one speed for the speed of light. It's c, the speed of light. And then we have the Galilean transformations that tells us how to relate quantities in one reference frame to quantities in another reference frame. And if we do that for a light beam, a laser beam, like we did in the previous video, we would get that Beowulf moving on a train records a different value for light speed than Anastasia does on the ground and at rest with respect to the ether. So these three statements can't all be correct at the same time. So most physicists thought, well, principle, principle of relativity, that seems about as solid as you can get. Galilean transformations seem self-evident. There must be something funny with Maxwell's equations. In particular, maybe they need to um, have a slightly different form if you're moving with respect to the ether so that your speed of light doesn't always have to be c. That said, attempts to um, experimentally test for the presence of ether um, always came up negative. So there's this growing tension of I mean, how do we figure, how do we reconcile all this? So Einstein takes a different approach. He says that the principle of relativity is correct and that Maxwell's equations are correct and that the problem is with the Galilean transformations. And this seems crazy. What could possibly be wrong with the Galilean transformations? Well, the thing that's wrong is this assumption that T equals T prime. According to Galileo and to Newton, time is time. You would never disagree with time just because you're moving. And Einstein says, mm, maybe we're going to have to revisit this. This is the assumption that, um, that we're going to have to change. And by saying that Maxwell's equations are right and that this is what needs fixing, what that implies is the following. that the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. After all, that's what Maxwell's equation says. It says the speed of light is the speed of light. So Einstein states very clearly the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. And so what that means, going back to this example, is that um, this is wrong. The Galilean transformations are not right 
And in fact, Beowulf would observe the speed of light at sea just like Anastasia would. All right, so this is the, um, the statement, the axiom, the assumption of Einstein that we'll actually spend the rest of the course unpacking. If the speed of light is the same in all reference frames, what does that mean for physics? What does that mean for time? What does that mean for length? So we'll start exploring that in the next video when we think about how to synchronize clocks.